Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. If this video helps you, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It is greatly appreciated and it really helps. Let's get to the video. Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about how we can translate some sine and cosine functions. So first of all, we see at the top of the screen, we have our sine function over here, we have our cosine function here. Now remember we have A and B from a previous video where A is our amplitude and B is our period. And now in this case, we have X minus H and we have a plus K. So we have H and K. Now H and K should be familiar to you by this point in your mathematics career uh, because you've seen H and K since Algebra 1. They are a horizontal and a vertical translation. H is a horizontal translation, so that means we're going to move left or right. That is kind of opposite of what it looks like. So if H is less than zero, we're going to go left. But our original equation or our original function says X minus H. So if I plug in a negative number for H, it's gonna become minus a negative, which would be plus, right? So if it looks like X plus a number, we're actually going left. And if it looks like X minus a number, we're actually going to the right. Okay, so keep that in mind for horizontal. For vertical, it is what it looks like, plus K. If K is greater than zero, you're translating up. And if K is less than zero, you're translating down. So what are we translating? Well, we're translating our initial Y equals A sine B of X or Y equals A cosine B of X function, which we graphed in a previous video on the channel. Now, also, if we have a horizontal translation of a periodic function, a little vocabulary word here, this is called a phase shift, okay? So it's about a four-step process to graphing, um, and we're gonna do this when A and B are both greater than zero. So step number one, we're gonna make sure we know what our amplitude is, that is A. We wanna know what the period is, that's gonna be two pi divided by B. We wanna know the horizontal shift, that's our H value, and we wanna know the vertical shift, which would be K, those four things of our graph. Next, we're gonna draw the midline of the graph. So that's gonna be Y is equal to K. So if we have a vertical translation, we're gonna go ahead and draw maybe just a horizontal line um, denoting our midline of our graph, and that's gonna be the equation Y equals K. Then we're gonna find five key points by translating the key points of Y equals A sine B of X or Y equals co A cosine B of X, like we did in a previous video. So essentially we're gonna take our um, first quadrant or first and fourth quadrant, if you will, uh, but essentially just the positive X axis. And we're gonna start with origin. And at the end of our X axis, we're gonna write our period and then we're gonna split that into fourths. So let's just say my period was four pi. So I would have zero pi, one, uh, two pi, three pi, four pi, okay? So those, are, those would be basically our five key points there that we're talking about. Then we're just simply gonna draw the graph through those translated key points. So we're actually gonna do three examples in this video. One where we handle just a vertical translation on number one, just a horizontal translation on number two, and then we're actually gonna do both a horizontal and a vertical translation on number three. Okay, so let's start with number one. We have f of x equals three sine two x plus five. So our amplitude is a, so that our amplitude will be three. And our period is 2 pi over b. Well, in this case, b is 2. So this is just going to be pi. So period is pi. Um, and now notice that we don't have parentheses around our x here. So we actually do not have an h value. So there's, no, there's not going to be any horizontal shifting here. Uh, but in this case, k is equal to 5. So we're actually going to have a vertical translation 5 units up. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that midline in here. So this would be right between 4 and 6 would be 5 and I'll make that just a dash line for us now, okay? Now, before I translate my graph, I'm gonna graph the function as if it did not have a translation so that we can see the points actually moving, okay? So in yellow will be our translated graph. So in black, I'm gonna graph it without a translation. So if I'm just graphing this as three sine two x, well, I know my amplitude is three and my period is pi. So I would put pi here I would put three pi over two here. This would be just pi, or excuse me. Uh, this would be, uh, sorry. This one here is three pi over four. This would be pi over two, and this would be pi over four, okay? All right, so now um, we notice that um, we're working with a sine function, right? And so for sine, we're gonna start at the origin. So sine's at the origin. And my amplitude of this graph would be three, okay? Now, keep in mind, we're not translating it up yet. We're just graphing it as if it were three sine two of x. So now I can see that my next point would be here. This would be three, right? Now I'm gonna go back down to pi over two at zero. 
Now I'm gonna go down to negative three. So let me erase this three pi over four so that we can put a dot here at negative three. All right, and then back up to zero. So this would be my sine graph before I do my translation up. Okay, so now let's go back to the, the yellow color here. And we see that k is equal to five, right? So we have a vertical translation five units up. So we take my point that's at the origin and we're gonna move it up to zero comma five. So it would be right there. My next point was at my amplitude, which was three, but we're moving it up five. So that's actually gonna be up at eight units now. Okay, now pi over two was at zero. So it's gonna be on my midline at five. Then we were at three pi over two, uh, three pi over four was at negative three. So we're gonna move that up five units. So that's actually gonna be at positive two. And then we're gonna move our pi, uh, pi comma zero uh, was, is gonna go up five units. So that's gonna be on our midline as well. Okay, so now notice what's happened. We've taken those five points and we've moved them all up five units. So the yellow graph there, that would be our final function that would represent number one, okay? All right, now let's move on to number two. We have h of x equals two cosine of one fourth pi, um, and then x minus pi. So here our amplitude is two and b is one fourth. So this would be two pi divided by one fourth, which would be two pi times four. So actually eight pi is our period. Okay, so now we see that we have x minus h in parentheses. So here h is equal to pi, which means we're going to shift to the right pi units, okay? All right, so now, once again, let's graph it as if we did not have the shift to the right, and then we'll shift it, um, I'll shift all of our points to the right. Now we're graphing cosine, and so our amplitude is two, so let's put a two there, let's put a negative two there. And for cosine, we start at zero comma amplitude. So let's put our point there. All right, now my period is eight pi. So let's do eight pi, this would be six pi, this would be four pi, and this would be two pi. All right, so now we were, uh, from our next point, we're gonna go down to zero, Let me fix that, down to zero, then we're gonna go down to negative two, then we'll back up to zero, and then back up to positive two. So this would be my graph if I did not have my translation to the right. Well now in yellow, let's just move those points pi units to the right. So I'm just gonna add in a tick mark here on my x-axis, which would represent like pi, three pi, five pi, seven pi, and nine pi. And let's just move these units, or move these points one pi unit to the right. So now this point would be here, this point would be here, this point would be here, 6 pi goes to 7 pi and 8 pi goes to 9 pi. So now we're just going to connect the yellow dots and this one will be our graph that would represent the function that we have done for number two. Okay? All right, so number one, we vertically translated. Number two, we horizontally translated. Now for number three, let's do both. So just as we started, let's identify amplitude, let's identify the period. So here we don't have a value for A, so the amplitude is just one. And my period, well, two pi divided by one half is gonna be two pi times two, so four pi. All right, so now notice that we have our graph. I went ahead and made the graph kind of all four uh, quadrants, if you will, or you know, both sides, positive and negative for the x and the y axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and label my x axis. This is four pi, three pi, two pi, pi. And I wanna draw this one so that we can see it a little bit better. So let's go negative pi, negative two pi, negative three pi, and negative four pi. Okay, so now my amplitude is just one um, initial, um, for my graph, right? And so let's draw for sine. Well, we know we have our, our point at the origin. Then we're gonna go up to our amplitude, down to zero, down to negative one, back up to zero, and we would have our graph that way. Or if we wanna to go to the other way, we go down to negative one, back up to zero, back up to positive one, and back down to zero. All right, so now we've got our sine graph here for our function, okay? Now, that would be with, with no translations, right? So now we see that h is negative two pi and k is negative three. Now it looks like x plus two pi, right? Well, remember, what did we plug in to get plus two pi? Well, it was x minus h, so we actually plugged in negative two pi because it would be x minus negative two pi. 
So that just means we're going to go left 2 pi units. And then when k is negative 3, we're going to go down 3 units. Okay. All right, so down 3 means let's go ahead and draw our midline here through negative 3. And we'll make that a dash line. OK, so now for all of these points that we have, how many did I graph? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points, right? Now, a couple of them, they might not show up, especially negative 4 pi, negative 3 pi, because they're going to move left out of our screen. But we'll still get an idea of what the shape should look like. So let's start on the right over here at the point 4 pi, comma 0. We want to move this point 2 pi units left and 3 pi units down. So I'm going to move it from 4 pi to 2 pi, and it's going to go down here to negative 3. Now from 3 pi, we're going to go left to pi, because that would be 2 units to the left. And then we're going to go down to negative 4, right? Because it was at a y value of negative 1, so now it's at negative 4. Now from 2 pi, we are going to go left to 0, and then we're going to go down 3 units to negative 3. From pi, we're going to go left 2 to negative pi, and we're going to go down 3 units from 1 to negative 2. All right, and now from the origin, we're going to go left to negative 2 pi, and we're going to go down to negative 3. And negative pi, we're going to go left to negative 3 pi, and we're going to go down to negative 4. And then negative 2 pi, we're going to go left to negative 4 pi, and we're going to go down 3 units to negative 3. And so now we can see we have our graph. So if we graph this way, and we're going up, back down here, and there we go. Okay, so now we have taken our graph, which would be sine one half of x, and we have shifted it two pi units left and three units down. Okay, and that's how you can translate some sine and cosine functions.